Oh, I'm supposed to. I'm supposed. To, every once in a while, I'm supposed to be making some sort of funny, funny thing about whatever the comic said, but I'm not. I'm not very good at that. So I'm going to say, um, if anybody has any money they'd like to give me, I need to tip Tony for the free meal that I got for hosting, and I'm pretty poor right now. So hit me up. This next comic, uh, I gotta be honest, first time I saw him, I was not impressed, but I gotta tell you, throughout my knowing of this person, he's not only become one of my favorite comics in Richmond, but a good friend of mine. Please welcome to the stage, Jay Walter Brayman. Thank you, Clay, for that incredibly heartfelt and tepid introduction. <laughs> ah, it's football season is starting. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you I don't care, do not talk to me about football, I don't care about it or your opinion of the game, the teams, the coaches, anything. My sport is Malaysian stone throwing. And I gotta say, I don't wanna I don't wanna talk about, you know, my personal interests too much on stage. I've only got a short amount of time, but I really think is really coming into his own this year. <laughs> but he's really got to watch out for... <laughs> he's, he's always been the MVP. <sighs> <sighs> Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day is come and gone, and I was upset because I couldn't, I couldn't participate because, yeah, I hate gays and Christians. <laughs> Where's my fried chicken restaurant? Really? All right. No, I actually found my fried chicken restaurant. It's just a ticket to Saudi Arabia. It's really expensive. I don't know. Oh, gays are boycotting Chick-fil-A. Christians are boycotting Oreos. Can't we all just get together and die of obesity as Americans? Well, after, after the whole Chick-fil-A thing came out, uh, people started putting up the names of other businesses with similar anti-gay policies. Uh, Walmart, uh, Gold's Gym, and one that stuck out to me, uh, Urban Outfitters. Yeah, the store that sells 19 different kinds of scarves has an anti-gay policy. I think that's a bad business model. But that's just me. I'm not a businessman. So a girl at work uh, showed me a list of her baby names. First off, there's a girl that has a list of baby names on her phone, so if you see her, run in the other direction. That's just a, that's just a warning for you guys. Uh, but one of them uh, stuck out to me was Tad. T-A-D. And this was her brilliant name. And it was recently pointed out to me that Tad was also a six-foot-tall, 400-pound grunge singer that toured with Nirvana in the late 80s and early 90s. So, yes, her beautiful baby boy, or girl, is, I don't, is, Ta is Tad a, a unisex name? It would probably have to be. But she's going to name her beautiful child thing after a man that drove around with Kurt Cobain and chugged Robotussin. Childbirth's a beautiful thing. <sighs> so I'm trying to get back into the dating scene, and uh, I've realized that a lot of girls are looking for something very specific. A lot of women are, are looking for a guy that won't come home smelling like booze or drugs or another woman, and I can't promise that. <laughs> but I can promise I will never come home smelling like Axe, Bud Light Platinum, or Tiki Bob's Cantina. <laughs> And I think that should count for something in America. No, I don't know. I, in Richmond, I've begun to think my only impediments to dating are that I'm not vegan and I don't ride a bike. I'm serious. I was actually at a party, had that conversation with a girl. Are you vegan? No. Do you ride a bike? No. And what I can only describe is utter fear and horror crossed across her face as she started backing slowly away from me. Convinced at any moment I'm going to walk into a bar, there's going to be a hipster Donald Sutherland in non-prescription glasses and swallow tattoos. Hey, barkeep, can I get a cheeseburger? <laughs> I do not need to be assimilated by that. I can't afford 19 different kinds of scarves. 
So I want to do uh, one more thing, then I'm going to get out of here and let you guys get on with your lives. Um, show intervention. Uh, saw an episode uh, recently, and when the big draw was the girl is a duster addict. Compressed air you used to clean out your computer keyboard. Duster addict. That's, the, that's all the ads are about that, and the introduction to the show is about that. And she's the only one on there, so it must be important. And about ten minutes into the episode, they just casually mention that the girl is also an anorexic cutter. And the sh camera then cuts to a scene of her slumped against a wall with her ribs jutting out of her jaundiced yellow skin, hacking away at her arm with a utility knife, and then out, of the out from the corner of the screen comes that fucking duster can. Because, you know, that's really the problem you need to deal with now. <laughs> No, and then they, they bring the family in for inter the intervention, and they're still just talking about the duster. It's like, honey, we got to get you off this compressed air, but don't, start, don't stop cutting yourself and starving yourself because we raised a boring daughter. That's our fault. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. Uh, intervention deals with problems in the same well-respected manner that A&E deals with all their problems. Please stay tuned for Dog the Bounty Hunter Gets Inner City School Kids Off Drugs by Stabbing Them. <laughs> I'm Jay Walter Brain and Dr. Shane. Good nabbing. <laughs> Give it up again for Jay Walter Brain, everybody. All right, this next comic coming to the stage. Uh, I first saw him right here at Cafe Diem about five months ago. I have not seen him out since, but it's probably because he was in Charlottesville. I thought he was very hilarious then. It's good to see him back again now. Please welcome to the stage, Ben Grant. Hey, guys. Um, we're having a lot of fun tonight, but... Um I just want to say, I really enjoyed that last comic, but I didn't like that bit about Tad, because my dead father's name is uh, Nirvana, so. <laughs> um, I'm going to be doing, can you still, good, all right. Uh, I'm going to be doing some new jokes, so strap in, because everything I say is fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> well, um, guys, it's been 20 years. Can someone turn Jay-Z's headphones up? Um, a lot of talk about gay marriage recently. Uh, I don't personally support gay marriage, um, because... Ew. <laughs> if God didn't want you to pray the gay away, why does that rhyme? Um, I was, uh, in 7-Eleven, I was buying condoms because my school teacher came in and I didn't want her to think I'm a virgin. And... <laughs> Um, they had a, they had a whole bunch of different flavors and types. They had long lasting. They had a pleasure for her, a pleasure for him. Uh, feels like nothing. And I'm like, yeah. Can you just make that one condom? Okay. So, you guys know when you go to uh, the Red Box and you're really excited because you're going to watch a movie with like your family or friend, or in my case, you're getting out of the house for the first time in two days away from the indoctrination uh, fumes of Domino's Pizza Boxes, and you're really excited. You're like, what am I going to see? You're flipping through, you're like, oh my gosh, I want to see all these movies, like I'm so excited. Two minutes in... Someone comes up, stands behind you, and they are getting pretty impatient. So you rush it, you get Alvin and the Chipmunks to squeak wool, and you're like, fuck, I haven't seen the first one, I'm gonna be lost. But you can't even pay attention because they made the Chipette so fucking sexy, why would they do that to me? But then you're like, 
hey, like maybe to a chipmunk, my tiny shriveled dick kind of seems like big and enjoyable. So it's like, oh my gosh, am I about to like jerk off to some chip S? Like, what am I going to do? Who is it going to be? Well, it can't be Brittany because like obviously all the guys want her. So you got to leave her. I'll jerk off to the psychological damage later. Have a better time. Then it's not going to be Eleanor because no fatties. So you're left with the smart one. Because, and why not the smart one? Because you gotta teach Seridor a thing or two. It's like, stop being just a fucking nerd all the time. You're never gonna get women. Then you're like, what the fuck am I doing? Why, when did I start jerking off to this Alvin and the Chipmunks and stop jerking off to my favorite Disney princess, Ariel? She's a redhead, she looks grand bikini, and she's quiet. <laughs> That was a little choppy. I've never said those words out loud before. I'll do it. Um, I have... Uh, I said jerk enough. We ain't watching that. Like, I was trying to avoid the first time. Just kept rolling on. Um, sorry, Mom. Uh, I have... Uh, I just moved into my new uh, house, and I have ants in my room. And I looked up, and the way to get rid of ants is to spray vinegar. Um, because to ants, uh, vinegar smells like vinegar. <laughs> I think my favorite sign is, um, bridge may be icy. I don't know, it might be icy, it might not. I want to be a billboard. Why am I shaped like a diamond when I feel like a square? I'm gonna make this joke really quick. Uh, I'm trying to get a job here. I applied at Target, and they kind of have like a 50-question survey to make sure you're okay. Like, hey, if you're, you know, if you saw an employee stealing, would you um, murder him? And I'm like, oh no. Um, but one of the uh, one of the questions was if um, one of the questions was that light man. One of the questions was, uh, how do you feel about your life right now? Not so great, pretty good, or everything's going my way. <laughs> Guys, let, shut up, let me finish it. Oh god, I don't know, I'm applying for fucking Target! Okay. Um, here, here, here are some, uh, here are some quotes real quick. Uh, I guess this is all I have time for, here are some quotes. Um, man, fuck all the haters. I'm gonna be who I wanna be no matter what y'all say. That was, uh, Hitler. <laughs> um, I love pussy. That's a, uh, gay kid getting his Facebook hacked. <laughs> and, uh... Are you popular? Because you sure are a dick sometimes. That's um, the 15 year olds I buy weed from. Uh, thank you. Ben Gray, give it up for him again. First of all, again, everybody. I noticed there was a lot of talking going on. Shut the fuck up! I'm trying to do a comedy show here. If you want to talk in the middle of the comedy show, go to the smoking room and get the cancer that you deserve. All right. In case there was any questions uh, about what I said earlier, yes, I really need money to tip Tony. <laughs> I was not kidding, so please, if you could just leave some dollars next to me, or tell, or give it to Tony, and tell him, it's, tell him, like, one of these is from Clay, and if, like, five people do that, if just five people, if just five people donated right now, this, this issue could be resolved. All right, um, this, this next comic, uh, I love him, he's awesome, I'm sure you'll love him too, his charm is infectious, please welcome to the stage. Mr. Josh Maxwell. Woo! 
All right, everybody, Clay. All right, yeah. It's fun to watch a guy try. Um, when we get on stage, uh, comics, I think we all try to, we, we want to make a connection with the audience, you know? There's something like fundamentally bent in all of us, and we want your approval, you know? We want to feel like we're doing something with our lives. And uh, just to share a little bit about me, I uh, recently just crossed the one-year clean mark. You know what I mean? So after like 14 years of doing drugs and everything, I finally like cleaned up my act. So I feel like I got a lot of wasted time to make up for. So I want to make a connection with you guys. I want I want it to mean something, you know? Because after a while, you just you get tired of throwing your life away. You know, you see all your friends, they start to get married, they start having kids, which, well, that is, that's really just throwing your life away just in a more ostensibly, like, socially acceptable way. But still, I felt like I needed to, like, you know, jump ahead a few pegs. And I couldn't fucking come up with anything because once a drug addict, always a drug addict, I always say, oh, we're, so does the big book. But I've decided that to make my mark, instead of the stain that I'm currently leaving, I'm going to make a, a catchphrase, all right? You know, it's something that people will be saying years from now. And that catchphrase, it's going to be, rip it off the hinges. Like, hey man, you want to go out tonight? We're going to fucking rip it off the hinges. And I think this will be a good idea, because I'm going to do it slow. I'm going to say it like once or twice a month, you know what I mean? Just to test the waters, just stick boom, the tip right in, that's it. Just to see how everyone's going to take to it. And I think it'll catch wind, so that way when I'm like 65, 75, if I fucking live that long, that I'll be able to talk to all those little kids around me, like that old crazy guy that's just like, ah, back in my day, I, I was the one that said that first, you know? <laughs> Whatever, you creepy old douchebag. You know, is what they'll probably say to me, and they'd be right. Is they, like, whiz by on their motorized Heelys with their PlayStation 9s playing in their contacts. That's how you have to keep them entertained. You know what? Here's the thought. Uh, I think it would be a great idea. I'm going to make this, I think. Or at least try to, like, market it to someone who's smarter than me that could actually come up with something better than, like, a cardboard box. It's a pair of glasses that has, like, a heads-up display in them that gives you points arbitrarily for the things you do in life. So for all those asshole friends of yours that like their sole income is like accruing gold on the plains of Azeroth while they like slay dragons all night long, like they'll actually have a reason to get up in the morning. So it'll be like, you know, taking out the garbage, 50 points. Right there. Going for a jog outside, get that tasty fat ass of yours a fucking pan. 100 points. Bing, bing, bing. Talking to a girl, 1,000 points. Get her to go back with you to your house? Bonus round. You know? Or for all those dudes that play like World of Warcraft and stuff, you know, it's like a take out the trash, like plus two to stamina. Go for a jog. Ooh, that's plus five to health. Talk to a girl, plus ten for charisma. Take her home. Oh, that's never gonna fucking happen, so I don't even need to worry about writing that code. Uh, I realized this recently when I moved down here. Uh, I get mistaken for a uh, UFC fighter by the name of Clay Guida. Does anybody watch UFC? Okay, a couple people do. It's, it's shocking how much this looks like him. The rest of this, nah, it doesn't, not even, not even remotely. I got some shoulders on me. That's about all I got. And uh, the problem with looking like uh, an ass kicker is that every now and then you meet like a drunk frat guy that wants to put that kind of thing to a test. And that's the problem. It's like Clay Guida is a professional ass kicker. Maxwell, I'm just like a lactose intolerant juice box kind of sort. That's about it. Like, I'm that, I'm the social, like, physical level, like, I'm at the bottom of my tax bracket. You know what I mean? Like, I gotta check asses that are, like, making way more than I am, and all I can do is walk in and maybe look like if you took me out, you could beat up the rest of my friends. That's all it is. Got loud mouth drug addict friends, I'm the first one that gets punched every time. And I'm the one that cries easier than the rest of them, too. So it doesn't bode well for the rest of us. I don't even know what that was. That was ridiculous. Um, when I moved down here, I, uh, I, do, I, I really did want to start taking things, you know, as, as, as many steps ahead in my life as I could. I felt like I'd lost so much time, so I wanted to earn something back. So I met a girl, and I decided right then and there that I would start dating her, and I would move in with her. You know what I mean? Let's see what everyone's been fucking talking about. It's so hard to live with other people. Yeah, right, faggots. I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to show you how it's done. It's hard. I'm not going to lie to you. That shit is hard. She's also in a one-bedroom apartment, so there's not a lot of room for us. Plus, she's got a seven-year-old kid, so there's not a lot of room for him. And I found out that it is also very awkward when the woman you were dating is only separated, not divorced. It doesn't matter to me morally. It just matters to her 
Because when she gets really mad, she starts to cry, and then you can't fight with them anymore, because then you feel like a fucking asshole when you're pointing them out all the time. Yeah! That's fucking right! You don't put fucking whole pieces of food in the garbage disposal! It's a trash can. Immediately underneath, and then she starts crying and you feel bad. You know? I would just start, I'd start, uh, I'd start thinking, you know, that we were meant to be together, and then I realized you were just a, a space keeper so that me and Daniel could get back together. I was like, man, maybe I fucking am. Yeah, maybe I am. But then we'd get in a fight, we'd start arguing about something stupid like Gogurt. You know what I mean? She starts screaming at me. You eat all the fucking Gogurt? Well, I don't know. They're delicious. I'll just go to the store and buy some more. That's your fucking problem! Throw money at it. Every time there's a problem, you're just gonna throw money at it. It's fucking grocery shopping. I don't know how else you do that transaction. I'm not paying off like a hooker to save my senatorial campaign. I can't go tell the, the, the bag boy fucking jokes and he accepts that as legal tender. It's just how you get the thing done. Alright. Well, after that smattering of laughter, I'll leave you with one more thing. It's a real hipster town here, so since I don't have like a ironic like wheel of cheese tattooed on my ankle, my contribution to the hipster scene is this joke. In the 80s, a lot of rock stars referred to a vagina as pie, which I think still applies today because women like pun, are irrational. That's right, it's a math joke, motherfuckers. 3.14159. My name is Josh Maxwell. Thank you, guys. Josh Maxwell, everybody. Uh, I love him so much that I decided to smoke a cigarette through his whole set. Uh, uh, this next comment coming to the stage is uh, one of my favorite ladies in the Richmond comedy scene. I think you'll like her as well. Please welcome to the stage, Rook Money! 